How's it going, everyone? This video is going to explain why the holidays of Easter and Passover fall on different days every year. Right? It's not always the same day, year to year. Uh, but it's always around the same time of year, and the, the dates are always close to each other. And we're actually talking about three dates, because there's, there's Passover, there's Orthodox Easter, and then there's Western Easter, which is Catholic and Protestant Easter. All three days, they differ year to year in terms of the exact Gregorian calendar date, but they're always close together. And the reason actually has to do with astronomy. It has to do with different groups of people finding different solutions to the same astronomical problem. Astronomical as in dealing with astronomy rather than astronomical meaning huge, right? And the reason that different groups of people had to deal with the same astronomical problem was actually because of geopolitical events that affected all of them because it started off as, as one holiday. Okay? There was one day commemorating both the events of Passover and Easter, and then it became two days, then it became many, many, many days, and then it, then it became three, and then two, and now it's three again. And to explain that whole process, we're going to have to start at a time before the holiday even existed. Okay? And to, we'll, we'll explain the, the historical links and, and what that has to do with astronomy. And in fact, in, in some languages, the same word is used to refer to both Easter and Passover. The, a word that literally means Passover, and if you want to specify which holiday you're talking about or which date, you would say Catholic Passover, or Orthodox Passover, or Jewish Passover. So we're going to go back more than 3,000 years okay, before any of these holidays existed. You have ancient Egypt and you have Jewish people who are a slave class in ancient Egypt. And one day they are set free. According to the Jewish tradition, there was a sequence of plagues that God sent to punish Egypt for having slaves, and it terrified the Pharaoh into setting the slaves free. So in the Jewish culture, this was a very significant historical event, and people decided to commemorate it every year. So how did they tell what time of year to commemorate it? Well, the Jewish calendar is based on lunar cycles. Every month starts with the new moon. The length of the months is 29 or 30 days alternating between 29 and 30 because the lunar cycle is approximately 29 and a half days. So every month starts with the new moon and the middle of the month, the 15th, is the full moon and then the month ends with the new moon. The next month begins on the first with the new moon again. So when the slaves were released, it was a full moon and it was the first full, well, it was the full moon of the first month of spring. So the month, the first month to start in spring, it was the full moon of that month. And the words for moon and month are similar, not by coincidence, they are related because originally months were meant to be in sync with lunar cycles. So people remembered, okay, the full moon of the first month of spring, that's when the slaves were released, so that is when we will celebrate Passover every single year. So there's two problems with that. The first problem is, how do you decide when it's spring? So the first month of spring, the first lunar cycle beginning in spring. Okay, how do you decide if it's spring? The second problem is, if you have 12 months, each corresponding to a lunar cycle that's 29 or 30 days alternating, so the average is 29 and a half. Well, 12 months like that will add up to 354 days, which is less than a solar cycle. It's not in sync with the seasons. A solar cycle is 365 days, not 354. So, how was this problem resolved? Well, how it was resolved was a 13th month was added every few years to keep 
this sequence of lunar cycles in sync with the solar cycle, the cycle of the seasons. Okay, how was this 13th month added? How was it determined whether to add it? Well, that had to do with how do you decide if it's spring? Okay, because without the 13th month, if you have 12 lunar months that are shorter than the solar year, then eventually your seasons will be out of sync. It's going to be the month that's supposed to be the first month of spring, but it's the middle of winter outside. So the system was as follows. Okay, you had a group of, uh, of Jewish leaders, a group of elders, who part of their job would be to go outside on the last month of winter, okay, towards the end of the last month of, of winter, the month during which winter is supposed to turn to spring. And they would decide, okay, does it look like spring? And if the answer is, yeah, yeah, we've clearly started into spring, then everything's fine. We just have 12 months. The next month is the first month of spring, which is called the month of Nissan. The name has no connection to the roots of the name of the Japanese car manufacturer. So next month, it's the first month of spring. And on the 15th day of that month, it's going to be a full moon and we celebrate passing. If it did not look like spring at the end of the last hypothetical winter month, then they would say, okay, we're doing this month again. We're adding the 13th month. So the last month of winter, we're doing that month again. And then the next month is going to be Nissan. It's going to be the first month of spring, uh, no matter what. Okay, so imagine the modern Gregorian calendar, 12 months. And let's say each month is 29 or 30 days. And we all agree, okay, April has to start in the spring. So if it's the end of March and we look outside, it's clearly not spring then we say, okay, we're doing March again. Okay, after the end of March, the next day, it's March 1st again. And we do March again, and then the next month is April. That was the system. So how did they decide whether it's sufficiently springy outside? Well, there were three conditions that were looked at. One of those conditions is very important because it has to do with future events here, is whether the spring equinox has happened. Okay, now in the southern hemisphere, this would be the autumn equinox, but these events are happening in the northern hemisphere. So whether the spring equinox has happened was one of the conditions. The other condition was how ripe the barley is. And the third condition was what kind of fruits are on the trees, whether these fruits correspond to spring having begun. Now, keep in mind, this is Israel, which is a more southern climate. Uh, so the condition of fruits on the trees is not the same as what you would see in, in northern climates. Right? So if two of those three conditions were met, it was determined, okay, it's springy enough. The next month is Nissan, the first month of spring, and 15 days in, it's going to be a full moon. We celebrate Passover. If only one of the conditions were met or none of them were met, then it was considered not not spring yet and so we're doing the winter month again right so like march right we're doing uh, that uh, that month again and then the following month is going to be spring no matter what so that was the system uh to keep the set of 12 to 13 lunar cycles in sync with the solar cycle in sync with the seasons and from an engineering standpoint, it's a pretty robust system, right? You let the system work, but you keep observing to make sure that it's in sync. And if it looks like it's fallen out of sync, you tweak it to put it back in sync and you let it keep working. And that system worked for over a thousand years. So Passover was celebrated for over a thousand years, okay? And then something something important happened, okay? During a Passover celebration, that was approximately 2,000 years ago, right? So escape from slavery more than 3,000 years ago, right? Then approximately 2,000 years ago, there was one particular Passover celebration which went down in history as one of the most famous historical events. Okay? So at the time, Israel was a vassal state of the Roman Empire. And there were a lot of people who were speaking out, who were preaching against 
uh, Roman rule who were who were active and 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 uh, speaking out against elements inside Israel that were uh, supporting or a part of Roman rule. And one of those preachers was Jesus. And Romans, they well, they didn't like the, the movements against them. And during one Passover celebration, Jesus was arrested by the Romans and he was crucified. And according to the Christian tradition, two days later, he was resurrected. So the the arrest happened and the, the crucifixion, I mean, happened on Friday and the resurrection on Sunday. And in some languages, the word for resurrection and the word for Sunday is actually the same word. Okay? So to those people who were followers of Jesus, this was a very significant event. Okay? Now, as the years went on, they continued to celebrate Passover like the rest of the Jewish people. But for them, Passover had another significance on top of freedom from slavery. It had the significance of, of the events of Easter, of, of what happened with Jesus. And for some people, uh, this was uh, this was celebrated on the same day. So it would just be part of Passover. So it's the first full moon of the first month of spring. And there's two things to commemorate. Uh, for other people, the fact that the resurrection was on Sunday, the Sunday was, was the important day. So they would celebrate Passover on the full moon. And then the Sunday after that, would be a celebration of Easter. Now, by this point, the the ideology of Jesus was spread to by his followers to other people, and Christianity had become a sect of Judaism. So it was a much much larger group of people uh, than than what was Jesus's followers when he was alive. Okay. So what happened then? Now, movements against the Romans continued. Okay. So so there were there were many sects, many groups that, that were active against the Romans, and eventually it led to an uprising. There was an Israeli Jewish uprising against the Romans, and the Romans clamped down on the uprising very, very hard. And what they did, they destroyed Israel. So they destroyed the monarchy, they destroyed the clergy, which was part of the temple ruling structure. It was also part of the, the centralized rule. Um, and they drove people out of major cities, and if, if you go to Rome today, actually, there's a, there's a big monument commemorating this, the sacking of Jerusalem. That monument is there from, from those Roman times, classical Roman times. So now there was no centralized Jewish rule. Uh, there was no uh, centralized uh, place where, where most of, of the Jews were living. So you had Jewish communities more so scattered around the Mediterranean region so uh, and Christian communities too. Uh, so Middle East, North Africa, Southern Europe. And what effect that had on the date of Passover and hence the date of Easter was that there was no longer a central authority that could decide are we having a 13th month or not? And if you just judge it by, okay, what's the first lunar cycle of, that starts in spring? Well, if you have people living in different continents, spring might appear to come at different months. Okay, so you have different people celebrating Passover and celebrating Easter at different times. Now, by this point, the Christians have been spreading their message to, to others who, who are not culturally or ethnically Jewish. And the ideology had spread to many other cultures. It had incorporated elements of those other cultures. It had dropped some of the more cultural, uh, tribal elements that exist in Judaism. And eventually Christianity got to the point where it is today, where the overwhelming majority of Christians actually don't have cultural or ethnic Jewish ancestry. And so the significance of, of Passover being uh, the release of the slaves wasn't as important, uh, whereas the events of Easter were were the the, the main important thing commemorated uh, for the Christians. And so the idea of celebrating Easter on Sunday started to make more sense, 
right? Whereas there was less reason to celebrate it during the full moon, right? There were still people who would celebrate it during the full moon, but the idea of, oh, it should be part of, it should be tied to the Passover celebration, that idea started to weaken. Okay. But there was still the same problem that Christians had. Okay, well, how do we decide when to celebrate it? So we still, we pick the Sunday after the full moon, the first full moon of the spring lunar cycle, the first lunar cycle of spring. Uh, how do we decide when spring starts? Okay, so this, this is the, the astronomical problem. Okay? And the Jewish solution to this problem was as follows. Okay, so you had Jewish leaders from many different communities from, from around the world. They, they gathered together and they decide, okay, we need a system for determining when there is a 13th month without anyone actually having to look outside and assess whether it looks like spring or not. Okay? And the system that they went with is actually an algorithm based on a cycle of 19 years. And within those 19 years, uh, there is a 13th month, sometimes every two years, sometimes every three years. But that algorithmic cycle repeats every 19 years, right? So every 19 years, the lunar pattern of 12 or 13 months once again matches with the, the solar pattern. And, and so everything, everything works that way. And so based on that system, okay, uh, you no longer needed anybody to, uh, to assess how, how it looks like spring. People could just keep count of you know, which year it is based on sets of 19 years. And based on that, they would know if there's a 13th month or not. Based on that, they would know what month is considered the first month of spring. And the 15th of that month was always a full moon and it was always Passover. And once the final tweak to the system appeared, it was also after the, uh, the spring equinox too. So what Christians did was said, okay, well, so, well, some Christians still continue to celebrate Easter during the full moon, and, and some Christians would celebrate it on the Sunday, the first Sunday after the Jewish Passover. Okay, So some would celebrate it during the Jewish Passover, and some would celebrate it the first Sunday after the Jewish Passover. So effectively, Christians were using the same system. Just whenever the Jews have Passover, some would celebrate Easter then, and some would wait for the next Sunday after that. And there was a, a meeting a couple hundred years later of uh, many different Christian leaders from many different communities, many different cities. And they decided, okay, we need a way to pick a date for Easter that is independent of the Jewish calendar. Okay, we're a different religion. Easter is celebrating a different thing. We need our own way of consistently picking the date without looking at the date of Passover. And the system they came up with was, okay, we will celebrate Easter on the first Sunday after the first full moon that is on or after the spring equinox. So spring equinox happens, right? If it's a full moon, okay, next Sunday, it's Easter. If not, spring equinox, wait for the next full moon. After that next full moon, whatever Sunday comes after that, that's Easter. And that was the system. And Christians started doing that. But some Christians still felt, well, no, it, it still has to be after Passover because that was the sequence of events. The Passover celebration started, and during the Passover celebrations, that's when Jesus was arrested. So Easter has to be after Passover. So the condition was, okay, it's the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, but not before Passover. So if the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox comes, but Passover hasn't happened yet, then we wait for Passover to happen, and, and then we'll do Easter on a Sunday after that. And eventually, over time, that was discouraged, and people were more encouraged to just, just to celebrate it regardless of when Passover is. So even if the, the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox happens to be before the Jewish calendar says it's Passover, still celebrate Easter then, and, and people converge to that, right? So you had Easter celebrated on one day, and you had Passover celebrated on a different day, but because it's different counting systems, sometimes the days would coincide. But then there was a split between the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church. 
And the churches ended up using different calendars. So the, the Orthodox Church continued to use the Julian calendar, the Catholic Church uses the Gregorian calendar, and Protestantism uses the same Gregorian calendar as uh, the Catholic Church. And why that caused a split, even though the idea is the same, first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, the disagreement happened as to when exactly is the spring equinox. Okay, what date exactly does the spring equinox occur? Okay, there could be different ways of calculating this. And as it turns out, what the Gregorian calendar says is the spring equinox. The Julian calendar spring equinox will map to the Gregorian calendar as early April, as April 3rd, rather than, I believe it's April 3rd, uh, rather than March 21st. So because the spring equinox is considered on different days, then the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox could turn out to be different Sundays. You could map everything to the Gregorian calendar, it can, can turn out to be different Sundays for the Orthodox Easter and for the Catholic and Protestant Easter. Okay? And sometimes they'll align, but typically the Orthodox Easter will be later and it will be after Passover. Okay? Now, because it's after Passover, a lot of people think that, well, it's still designed to be after Passover, that that's one of the rules, that, that Orthodox Easter has to be after the Jewish Passover. That's actually not one of the explicit rules for the dating of Orthodox Easter. It just happens to be that the way the math works out of the Orthodox calculation of the spring equinox and the first Sunday after the first full moon after that, and the Jewish cyclical 19 year, uh, 12 to 13 months per year system, the way the math works out is, is that Orthodox Easter uh, will be after Passover, the Jewish Passover. So you have these three dates, right? Orthodox Easter, Catholic slash Protestant Easter and, and Jewish Passover. And the date as mapped to the Gregorian calendar changes every year, although on the Jewish calendar, the Passover is on the same date every single year of, of Jewish months, which align with, with lunar cycles. On the Gregorian calendar, the, the three dates are, are different year to year, but sometimes they align and, and sometimes they don't, but it's always around the same time of year. And it's always around the first full moon after the spring equinox, and in, in terms of Passover, it is either on the first or second full moon, uh, sometimes second full moon, uh, since the spring equinox. And, and so these, these holidays are, are in this dance, right? Sometimes aligning, sometimes not, but, but always around each other because they're tied to the same astronomical events. And originally it was one day commemorating historical events that, that happened on, on the same day originally one holiday. And, and what I find so interesting about this is it's an example of how, now, of course, Jews and Christians are not the only two people who have days that are selected based on astronomical events. Right? And this is an example of how, how people are not just observers of the cosmic dance. Right, of, of the moon and, and the stars and, and Earth's place and, and, and the planets all moving and, and sometimes aligning and sometimes not aligning. We're, we're not just observing that. We are a part of that cosmic dance. Okay, Our behavior, our holidays, our, our choices, it, it is led by that cosmic pattern and we, and we move and, and plan things in sync with that. And different cultures, different religions, celebrating different holidays that commemorate different things at different times, it's still linked and astronomy is part of that link. So it's like you have different planets, different moons, they're on different paths along different orbits, but they're orbiting the same star, they evolve from the same nebula, and once in a while they do align. That's pretty cool. And that is the analogy that I will end this video with.